Good morning! Welcome to a new series thing I'm doing, maybe? Um, I haven't decided on the name yet, so hopefully by the time I upload this, it'll, you know, be the title of the video. But basically, I'm Elio, and I've been recently kind of going on a new gender journey thing. Um, I've known I was non-binary since I was about like 14, 15 when I first started hearing about the word because like I've never really felt particularly attached to like womanhood but also not manhood and just gender in general it was kind of meh. The thing is that I was very insecure and anxious as a teenager so I never really gave myself any space to explore what that actually means to me. Um, like I didn't, you know experiment with more masculine presentations or like names and pronouns and things because I just didn't really want people to <laughs> perceive me <laughs> so I kind of just lived as like uh, a girl um, and only like a few of my closest friends knew that I was non-binary but now like everybody else in the world I've been kind of <laughs> alone outside of like social perception uh, for the past year or so and so I've been kind of spending more time with myself and figuring out who I am and it has kind of made me have some realizations. So I currently identify as trans mask non-binary, I go by he or they pronouns and I go by the name Elio now and it's been kind of a fun journey that I'm still very much on. Um, you know, cut my hair short, I'm experimenting with just my appearance in general and thinking about gender a lot, so it's a fun time, it's also a weird time <laughs> but obviously since I'm not really able to be a part of like any real life queer communities at the moment because everything is closed I've turned to books instead <laughs> so I'm going to be reading a bunch of like books with trans protagonists or just books that are like very genderqueer in some way and I thought I would take you along on this journey with me. So the first book I'm going to be reading is Frankenstein by Jeanette Winterson. I've heard a lot of mixed reviews about this. Um, to be honest I think I've heard that the trans rep here isn't the best but I've always wanted to read Jeanette Winterson and this book recently arrived at my library. Um, so I thought I would check it out, and I already read a little bit last night. Uh, so far it seems like the chapters are kind of alternating narratives between uh, Mary Shelley in like the 19th century when she's around the time that she's writing Frankenstein, um, and then the modern day uh, where our protagonist is Dr. Shelley, or Rye Shelley. Uh, we don't really know that much about Rai yet. I'm guessing this person is like trans in some way, but I don't I don't know the details yet. So yeah, so far it's the Rai chapter was really funny. Uh, I really enjoyed you reading that, but the Mary Shelley chapter was a bit slow, like very much like it was actually written in the 19th century, if you know what I mean. But I'm excited to see where this Rai takes me. I haven't really read the synopsis or anything, so I kind of have no idea at the moment what's going to happen in this book. I'm guessing the narratives will somehow converge. I don't know. But yeah, right now I am going to go have some breakfast and continue reading. So I'll see you when I have some thoughts to share again. <laughs> the next day and I'm about halfway through the book now so I thought I would update you because a lot's happened and I have thoughts. <laughs> so first of all for the plot, uh, like I said Mary Shelley is writing Frankenstein. She's in the villa in Switzerland with like her husband Lord Byron, Dr. Polidori and Claire um, and they're having a lot of conversations about what it means to be human, whether we have like a soul that distinguishes us from the rest of the animal kingdom, uh, what happens after we die, and also there is the topic of like machines and automation, machines replacing humans, because that's kind of become a relevant topic in society now. 
Uh, so they're kind of just talking about what that means for the history of humankind. Could humans be potentially replaced by robots? To what extent? How far can this like go? And whether it's a good thing or a bad thing. So yeah, all these conversations are kind of inspiring Mary Shelley's story about you know, a crazy scientist who decides to play God and create a human, a kind of artificial intelligence in a way. And on the other side we have Rai Shelley, who is a doctor, and his story starts out at a convention for like artificial intelligence, robotics, things like that. Um, so he's also very kind of involved with these topics regarding the future of humankind related to artificial humans, basically. And he is trans. He describes his gender in a very interesting way. Basically, he's non-binary, but I don't know if Jeanette Winterson is aware of the concept of non-binary. I mean, she's obviously aware of the concept, but I don't know if she knows the terminology. He describes himself as someone who generally like presents as male, um, like he is on testosterone, he's had bottom surgery, no, he's had top surgery, he doesn't want bottom surgery, um, because he also does still feel kind of an attachment to his like female side. Uh, he kind of considers himself anatomically female, and he says that He's fully female, part male, and things like that. Which I think is really interesting, and in a way is relatable to me as well, as like a non-binary trans-masculine person. I also like don't consider myself uh, fully man or male or anything. I do feel attached to my like female uh, parts as well, <laughs> but would still enjoy living in society as a man, like Rai is. So in a lot of ways I can relate to him, and it's really cool to read about him. Uh, but also you can kind of tell that <laughs> he was written by a cis person who doesn't fully understand what she's talking about. Like there is a conversation towards the beginning when I think he first kind of reveals to the audience that he is trans where someone asks him if he's like a man or if he's a woman um, and he's like, no, I'm transgender. Which isn't something that trans people would usually answer. Like transgender isn't, it's a part of your identity, but it's not usually like the primary identifier you would use for yourself. I mean, I can understand what Shelley, what Jeanette Winterson is doing with this, because obviously like transhumanism is a big topic right now and just the transition of humankind. So like, I can understand the point of Rice Shelley in this book is to be like a person who is going over and above what people kind of previously considered to be the limits of humankind. This book isn't, it's not great trans rap and I don't think it's supposed to be, like that's not how Jeanette Winterson meant it. Um, obviously I can understand how that is problematic, like trans people shouldn't be used as just, I don't know, tropes or thought experiments or whatever. Um, but Jeanette Winterson's whole book is a thought experiment. <laughs> That's kind of her whole shtick in here. In that sense, I can kind of, I can understand what she's doing and to be honest, I find it interesting as well because I'm also kind of interested in the whole topic of the future of humankind and how far we can go with like transhumanism and I don't know, going over and beyond the limits of biology. I'm one of those people who would very much be interested in finding a way to immortalize the human. So yeah, I understand I understand how it's problematic, but also personally, I'm currently really enjoying it. Also, there's a quote in here that I really liked. Did I already mention Victor and Rai are lovers in this book? I also forgot to mention who Victor actually is. Um, so he's like the Victor Frankenstein parallel character in, this, in Rai's narrative. Um, he's a mad scientist who's obsessed with transhumanism. They met at like a cryogenetics lab. Is that the right word? Anyway, they met through like this transhumanist scientific community thing. Um, and now they are kind of working together in a sense. And yeah, they kind of developed a relationship. Their relationship is a bit sus. Rai knows that Victor is like this super, this egomaniac, crazy person and doesn't really, tries to stay kind of emotionally distant in that sense because he knows that like they're not gonna have a serious relationship ever. So he's basically just there for, you know, the sex and for the interesting conversations because Victor is a really interesting person to be around and he's really charming and stuff. 
But yeah, Victor does seem kind of like he's very fascinated in Rai because he's trans, and that kind of, I mean, as as a like a transhumanist kind of person, that's obviously something that Victor is drawn to, um, and it kind of feels like in a way Victor is trying to get ownership over Rai in a sense. So it's not really the healthiest relationship. <laughs> but anyway, uh, in the middle of a sex scene, Victor says, why are you so easy in your body? And Rai answers, because it really is my body. I had it made for me. And I just really like that. But yeah, basically, I am really enjoying the read at the moment and I'm excited to get back into it. Ooh. Also, I got a really cool delivery yesterday. My friend bought me this. It's a pin in like trans colors and it's based on an Estonian saying uh, don't get flies into my head basically which means like don't lie to me don't tell me nonsense and I just think it looks really cute he's so pretty I hope this is focusing that is my update for now see you later ah uh, yeah just a quick update from the evening of the next day I've been quite busy so I haven't read like too much I'm like three quarters of the way through now um, there have been some twists, there's some kind of fun stuff going on, but there was a, a scene I didn't like. There's like a really sudden kind of rape scene or sexual assault scene. I wasn't de that detailed, I don't really know how to classify it, but anyway it was, yeah, sexual violence. It was quite unexpected for me and it was just treated as something quite casual that Rai, it was at Rai um, and it was like a, a transphobic kind of attack and it was just like kind of treated in a very casual way in a sense um, and it didn't really have any purpose in the story at least so far it doesn't look like it's had any purpose in the story other than to just show how, I don't know, trans people can experience these things. So yeah, I, I didn't really enjoy reading about that. <laughs> it just kind of reminded me about how scary it would be to kind of enter male spaces if I ever like do kind of reach a point where that would be something I wanted to do or that I could do. Because um, most men are scary as fuck. So yeah, the, the assault took place in like a men's bathroom at a bar, so yeah, that wasn't very fun. But you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna finish this soon and then I'm gonna wrap this up like tomorrow morning-ish. And then I'll let you know my final thoughts. So, I finished the book. I don't really have anything to say plot-wise because this was not really a plot book. Um, it was more of like a series of vignettes, different little scenes from these characters' lives, from these different narratives, uh, where the topics that I talked about earlier are being discussed and examined. Personally, I enjoy that sort of book. I know it's not for everybody, but the topics were interesting for me and I enjoyed the writing style. I really liked how Jeanette Winterson's writing style changed throughout the narratives, like in the Mary Shelley narrative, it was very poetic and more introspective and kind of old-fashioned. And then the modern-day narrative was very kind of snappy and witty. Uh, the dialogue was often really funny. It often kind of read like a, like a sitcom dialogue, um, which I enjoyed. I enjoyed both of them. And then also just the kind of fluid changing between them both was also... It, it was enjoyable and like a very varied Kind of read. I did feel like it kind of lacked a clear conclusion, but then I guess because it wasn't really a plot story, I mean, I don't really know what kind of conclusion I could have expected, but but yeah, it kind of felt a little unfinished in that way. But yeah, generally I would say the reading experience was quite enjoyable. Um, as for the kind of trans aspect of this book, which is, you know, the reason I started and reading it. Like I said, I did find Rai's character relatable to an extent um, and I do think that he was like an interesting addition to the cast of characters um, especially regarding like the kind of 
topics that were explored in the book because you know he was kind of an example of the ways in which uh, science has evolved to allow us to kind of not be trapped by our bodies and to kind of create our own reality our own bodies the way that we want them to be and like it was viewed in mostly a, a positive way at least but generally it did start to bug me how all the other characters in his narrative were always making like casual transphobic like jokes and things and it wasn't they weren't they wasn't treated like transphobia or anything Rai himself mostly just ignored all of these stupid comments that they were making um but yeah it was like kind of just a running joke among all the other characters which was yeah annoying <laughs> Um, and like I said, the assault scene, really unnecessary. It didn't come up in any way in any other part of the book. So it's just like, I I really don't think that needed to be there. And also the relationship between him and Victor. It wasn't healthy, it wasn't good. Because um, Victor did really just treat him like kind of a specimen. Like, I think he literally said at some point, that the reason why he was so drawn to Rai was because he was the unknown. Um, he wanted to explore the unknown. So that was stupid. <laughs> they did develop feelings for each other by the end. I said earlier that it seemed like they were not getting very emotionally involved, but yeah, obviously, obviously it did eventually. And yeah, it just wasn't very healthy or good or romantic or comfortable to read. <laughs> Those are, I think, the main things I wanted to address. I think, as a final rating, I would give this three stars. And that is Frankenstein by Jeanette Winterson. Just as a teaser, um, the next book I'm going to be reading is an actual Own Voices book, which I'm super excited for. Everyone's been talking about it. It's the transition baby. I got it in the mail a couple days ago, and I think I'm going to start it tonight. Stay tuned for that. <laughs> and that is the end of my first episode of whatever this series is going to be called. <laughs> Still haven't made up my mind. But yeah, thank you for tuning in, and I hope I'll see you next time. Bye!